Ebenezer is equivalent to iniquity. Whatever word you choose to use when you hear the term cancer, think of one of those terms. Turn your Bible, if you can, to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And we're going to look at verses 6 and 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 to 7 and I'm reading from the New King, King James Version of the Bible. And matter of fact, I'm just going to go ahead and start at verse 1. See, because this particular passage of Scripture is talking about some cancer that's in the body. Now, this may not be your particular incident or situation, but it's simply an example of cancer in the body. Verse 1 says, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you. Who is he talking about? The body of Christ. Who is he talking about? The church of Corinth. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. See, in this particular church, there was a son that was sleeping with his stepmother. Amen? Sin that should not be in the body of Christ. See, you may not be sleeping with your stepmother, but you're sleeping with somebody that ain't your husband or ain't your wife. See, you may not be sleeping with your stepfather, but your nasty attitude got you cussing people out all the time. You may not be sleeping with your stepmother, but every time you turn around, you got a bottle of liquor to your lips. Oh, you may not be sleeping with your stepfather, but your mouth is so foul that every other word is a cuss word. Immorality in the church. There is cancer in the body. And so it is, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned. When you think about it, you mourn because you're sad about something. But he's saying to this church, you got this mess going on in the body of Christ. Things taking place that you see and it doesn't even grieve you. See, something is wrong with us as believers when we see sin and know of sin, and it does not grieve us. Sin should cause you to mourn. But he says, and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from you. For I indeed, as absent in the body but present in spirit, have already judged as though I were present. Him who has done so this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. See, there comes a time when you have to let a person go. See, we have an obligation to minister to those that are going through that are filled with cancer, but there comes a point in time when you have to recognize that a person don't want help, that a person ain't trying to change. See, they're happy with cussing, they're happy with drinking, they're happy with smoking, they're happy with sleeping, they're happy with these things, and they have no desire to change. And when you notice that, you have to get to a point where you say, you know what, I'm going to turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh to save their soul. So you think about it. It's not that you're condemning them to hell because as a child of God, you're going to reign with God when you leave this earth. But sometimes you have to let a person go so the devil can kick their butt and in the midst of it, hopefully they get back on track. Amen. Turn such a one over to Satan. Amen. Some people may say, I can't believe that you would do something that is necessary. At times, why will I labor over you and pour into you and, and cry out for you and constantly want to help you and you don't want to help yourself? There's others in the body of Christ that's hungry. There's others in the body of Christ that have a desire to change. Yes, yes, glory to God. Yes. 